Number two, I know you're not talking about somebody being lucid and cogent <laughs> and enunciating their thoughts with clarity and you're bragging about Donald Trump. We can't be watching the same stuff oh, if I that's am. what you're doing. Oh, you ain't going to do that today. You know now, what? Lindsey Graham, hold it. Now, Senator Lindsey <laughs> <laughs> and look at his face. Look at his, he knows. He knows that is the most wackest comparison. So when it comes to uh, Vice President Harris, I need to make sure this is clear because I know a, a lot of people are watching this video for the first time and they're not going to do their homework on who I am or what my positions are when it comes to the Democratic Party Republicans. VP Harris has never been my first pick. She wouldn't be my second, my third, my fourth, not even my fifth pick. I would rather have Andrew Yang, you know, or or Marianne Williamson, if, if you remember who that is. I would honestly trust her to make some of these bigger decisions in regards to, you know, Israel, Palestine, uh, the, the middle class people, wages, health care. I think she would be a better fit, honestly, in my opinion. And, and of course, Bernie Sanders. But let's not kid ourselves. Be honest with yourself. You, you can do that. This is a safe space to be honest with yourself. All right. I'm not going to judge you if, if you don't say nothing stupid. But Harris, by far, is a way better, well-rounded candidate than Trump has ever been and could ever be. When it comes to policies <laughs> when it comes to stance on israel which i know that's you know a, a, a thin line but i would rather have her than trump uh, when it comes to character when it comes to job history harris trumps trump all the time it's not even a question you know so it's kind of awkward having these conversations with people because there's nothing you can point out from trump that Harris can't do or already hasn't done and done it better on anything, unless it's something crazy like I want to deport uh, uh, um, legal immigrants or turn the government against its own citizens. Like Trump will win that, I guess, you know. But let's go ahead and hear um, Stephen A. Smith just shut down Hannity when it with his stupidness, like. You can tell he has nothing, a substance to say. And he's just going to keep repeating nonsense that no one who has a, a real life, who has a real job and real bills cares about. So let's listen. All right. So let's stay on, on Kamala Harris for a second here. Um, Democrats let's are in a state of panic. All, all the momentum seems to be going to Donald Trump. I told you this would happen in a private conversation mm -hmm. we had. You were skeptical. <laughs> I think I was proven right. You know sports I better than am. I do. I think I know politics. I, I, I know. You do. Uh, but here's my question for you. You did call her out early. And you said mm -hmm. she's making a mistake not doing interviews. Now, she does right. these interviews, and I argue to you that the reason she's struggling and she can't, she's like tied up as a, in a pretzel because she can't express what she has stated publicly, that she wants the Green New Deal, the elimination of the filibuster. She can't say she wants to eliminate private health insurance, as she has said in the past. She's not going to run on what she has stated in the past to decriminalize the illegal immigration, free, free food, housing, health care, education. <sighs> okay. We need to put that in context, like everything that he's just spouting out in context, you will understand if you just say, um, <laughs> and, and, and we're going to re rewind because some things that he's saying is like, it's, it's not a bad thing, but when it, uh, am amnesty, it's a process to that. It's a 10 year process she wants to do with the uh, immigrants already here. Not like invite 10 million more people and just give them citizenship. Like, no, be honest, read it, and then you'll understand. But, you know, that's just how some of these people do. They'll just say things without its context, and it sounds a lot worse. So, decriminalize illegal immigration, free, free food, housing, health. Free food, housing, care, education, oh, sex change operations, and, and. Oh, my God, the whole sex. 
get off of that. That has already been in the books even before Donald Trump stepped into office. It's been in there. It, uh, I want to say in the 80s, if, if, if memory serves me right, since the 80s. So, like, why are we treating like this is something she wants to implement or uh, Joe Biden has, you know, snuck in? Like, no. Be honest with yourself. Stop lying. And a path to citizenship or banning fracking, banning offshore drilling. So she has to, mm -hmm. you know, fracking. give us word salad. Banning frack. Joe Biden has fracked, if that's a word, <laughs> has drilled more oil than Donald Trump has. And that's a fact. Quick Google search will show you. Because I already did it uh, a few days ago when... Uh, Laura Trump or whatever went up to onto the bref, uh, breakfast club and said, no, no, uh, Donald Trump is, I looked it up. Boom, boom, simple information. So why would she stray away to something that the democratic party has always been consistent with? Uh, Harris is not a progressive. She's, she's going to stay in her lane and do that well because she won't tell us how she really feels. She's hiding her true beliefs. Well, Donald Trump doesn't do that. Well, first of all, that's... <laughs> Well, first of all, that's a very long question. Let's get to it. Number one, yeah, you talk I'm about what a she's point. doing. Bottom line is this. As, as vice president of the United States, it's not. it wasn't her job to lead. Mm -hmm. She has to go along with the program. You are a support base. You support the person that is in charge who happened to be Joe Biden. That's number mm -hmm. one. Number two, I know you're not talking about somebody being lucid and cogent <laughs> and enunciating their thoughts with clarity and you're bragging about Donald Trump. We can't be watching the same stuff oh, if I am. that's what you're doing. Oh, you ain't going to do that today you know now what? lindsey graham hold it now yeah. senator and, and, look, and look at his face look at his, he knows he knows that is the most wackest comparison you cannot pretend as if harris is like stumbling over her words and just making no sense and blah blah no if you take five minutes and listen to any random spot in a trump rally his rally is like, what, two, three hours long? Just pick any spot and listen, five minutes. It will be incoherentness at his best. He will ramble. And, he, and he, he's trying to be cute and call it the weave. It's like, no, brother. You, you, you can't just put a name to it and make it sound like it's cool. You're just mumbling. You're just babbling on about nothing that matters. And that's... That's what that's what Hannity's trying to defend. Lindsey oh, Graham I'm is about today. to come on this show. Let me tell you now, something. That man can articulate himself sat very with well. Him. Not Donald Trump now. I have, okay, I have sat with him for hour after hour after hour, topic after topic <laughs> after topic, and he is so dialed in. Uh, I, 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 he, really? Look, you know, it's funny. People try. This is like the latest press argument. Conferences? And meanwhile, and meanwhile, Meanwhile, your friends in the Democratic Party, they ignored the obvious, significant, deep cognitive decline That's of true. the president for over four years. Mm -hmm. I said it before the 2020 election. Kamala to this day say, oh, Joe was really cognitively alert. And my question would be, now the Democratic Party, they, they should have pulled the plug a long time ago, right? Like, I'm not going to even lie about that. They should have pulled that plug a long time ago. But let's not pretend there was a there was an issue with Biden. Let's not pretend there's no issue with Trump. We know that for a fact. So it's kind of weird that he's trying to pivot to the Democratic Party and Joe Biden when as late as it was, the Democratic Party did what they had to do because they knew that wasn't going to work. The Republicans, on the other hand, they would want to trust me. I know because you can't listen to an idiot like that and feel good about <laughs> him having your party win. But they're just so invested into it that they're too scared. They're cowards at, at the end of the day. So it's kind of where he's trying to pivot. And it's like, that doesn't really help your argument. You know, that's a crock. I know that's a crock. What is Everybody she supposed to say, Sean? Knows it's a crock.
Not she, Donald Trump. Sean, what is it? What, what, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. What is she supposed to say? She's supposed to sit up there and say, you know what, my president, my <laughs> the boss. Truth. I mean, there was how cognitive about, decline the there. Truth. No, you're not. No, you you told the you truth don't on do your that. show? You don't dime out your boss. You don't, you don't. I do tell the truth on you my don't? show, but guess what? So I said I do. I said I do. What I said, however, you know what is makes that you I'm not successful? going to dime out my tell boss you. if that's my boss. Go Whoa. ahead. Oh, hang on a second. You know what? I have never watched you hold back. You, you, you say what I'm you mean. You back. mean what you okay. say. If anyone has ever been in a, in a position to where they have a boss that they answer to, you know that you're not going to make a fool out of him. I, I read the book uh, 48 Laws of Power. It was kind of a whack book. But one thing that that stuck with me is you don't want to call out your boss you don't want to put him in a spotlight to where it's unfavorable on him because that's not going to look good on you so obviously just like Hannity's doing he's not gonna be like yeah Donald Trump he's he's kind of losing it no because that's gonna make him lose his job quick he's he's gonna be working at CNN if he if he don't act right you know so let's not pretend it is the vice president's job is to be seen but not heard. No one cares. As, as soon as Harris or Trump gets into office, the VP conversation is done. We're, in, in, in like two years, we're going to forget who the VP is. Like, no one cares. So it's kind of weird how he's trying to have this weird double standard on Harris and Joe Biden. Let's ask Mike, Mike Pence on how he feels about Trump. If we really want to have that conversation, you know what I'm saying? So once again, if you're being honest in a conversation, you're never going to find yourself in an awkward conversation because you're being honest. So say, there you go. That's my yes. point. She is. But, she knew she out. knew he was a cognitive mess and now she's lying. Oh, no, I never noticed it. It's a because Sean, it's a lie. Because Sean, what Just you're trying to admit it's because, a lie. Because what people. But because what, uh, listen, I personally, uh, listen, I, a year earlier, I was saying there's slippage, there's something that ain't there, he ain't going to make it to the election, y'all better get with the program, no. do something about it. I was on the record about Joe Biden, but I'm not a part but of the Biden administration, else? and if I was a part of the mm. Biden administration, I wouldn't have told you that. <laughs> That's number one. Number two, she's the candidate <laughs> now. You, know you got to run against her. Are you going to beat her, Sean? Are you going to beat her? Are you going to you gonna beat her? Not, it's, it's a straight it's, up, it's straight up. Trump, the American people. Are you as confident as you want, my? <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny. Hannity is at a loss for words. He has nothing to say ex except for the key. <laughs> That's all he has because he knows his arguments is bull, is BS at best. And, <laughs> and that's the face of a guy right there is like, hey, we, we got to wrap this up, bro, because because you're you're not making a good argument. On Trump's behalf. Months the ago, biggest choice uh, election in a lifetime. I see some slippage on his part. Stephen A. Stephen A. Let me tell you something. <laughs> yes. She lied when she said the, the, uh, the inflation's transitory. They lied repeatedly. And she said, oh, no, the border's secure. The border's secure. Now, Are you all sure? of a sudden. She, Are you sure now, you want to make the now, case about somebody lying in favor of Trump? She never changed Are you her sure positions on she never changed her position on the Green New Deal, on sex change operations, open <laughs> borders, amnesty, until she became a candidate. You know what that means? She is a typical Fair. politician that just will say whatever needs to be said to win an election. Okay. You get the last word because I Can like I you so much. And what about Trump and abortion? I mean, his first term, he was gun ho about it. He put in three court supreme uh, justices who they he knew was going to overturn it and he was proud of it and he said in the interview and i said this in, in an earlier video um he wants to ban it and then punish women who have abortion so now all of a sudden he's like no we gotta let the states kind of you know make their decisions and you know i'm all about you know uh people uh, uh having their choice like no no uh-uh don't don't talk about no one lying if your candidate is the per <laughs> that's the only thing he does best. He gets a medal for lying. So let's not pretend like you're trying to defend a liar.
Can I retort? Let me let me yeah. let me retort. Fair enough. Okay. You didn't even bring up fracking. You didn't even bring up the border. That's absolutely a valid point on your part. What she's doing now is saying, excuse me, I'm open to compromise. I'm willing to mm. work across the aisle. I'm willing to listen and make things happen. Now, you have a lot of people who are going to vote for Trump and they absolutely positively believe he will change Washington. The question is, will it be for better or will it be for worse? The cesspool that we look at as the nation's capital, if you got him back in office yeah, and he's yeah. on a revenge tour and he's not focused on doing what it takes to lead the country. Where will that lead the country? You're not bringing that part up. So mm -hmm. again, we might not like something on there the left. We might not like something on the right. These are the two candidates that we've got to work with. And when you bring up issues in terms of character or in terms of being truthful or whatever, let me tell you something right now. Right. You can bring a whole bunch of Republicans and I'll be cool with it. You can't you know bring up Trump to make a case against somebody else run. using those arguments. You can't do that. That's simple. You you can't do it. You can't defend someone as horrible as Trump. <laughs> His policies, uh, uh, character, history, like nothing is boastful about that. Unless you're just a sick, hateful, demon human being, then yeah, like you you see yourself in Trump, you know? And, and if you do, that's a conversation you need to have between you and God. You know what I'm saying? But you you can't compare the two. The only thing Republicans can do is to try to fear monger people and feed the, the racist and, and the bigoted people in that party. That's the only thing you can do. You know, so if if we don't talk about the things that matter, um, you can't beat Harris. If the conversation was to pivot on talking about solutions that Trump has none, then people will understand. Maybe, kind of, sort of. I don't know. <laughs> but anyways, if you guys disagree with anything that I said in this video, there's a Discord link down below. Click on that so we can have a one-on-one -on -one talk. Or if you guys want to let me know how you feel in the comments down below, go ahead and do that. And like always... Let's have that conversation.